Hi cats, this is a small addition uh, to the last video about efficient arpeggio playing. The reason why professional pianists play arpeggio so fluently is, of course, because they train a lot. And there's a very simple exercise used in a professional piano training. At least it is very much used in the Eastern European tradition. However, I'm sure that it's popular enough on the West as well. It's called 11 types of arpeggios uh, in my area where I'm from uh, because, surprise, there is 11 types of arpeggios that you have to play within this exercise. And curiously, what I have noticed that students like this exercise much more than scales. So let's jump to the start. This exercise includes arpeggios using uh, such chord as a major triad, a minor triad, uh, the first inversion of the major triad, the first inversion of the minor triad, the second inversion of the major triad, and then uh, the, se the second inversion of the minor triad, and then dominant seventh chord with all its inversions. So. And at the end, number 11 is diminished seventh chord. Those are the most widely used arpeggios in uh, classical music. As you have noticed, each of those chords you play from the very same note. So how does it work? Uh, of course, we might start with the easiest task first and play this arpeggio, for example, two octaves long. And we may play it just with one hand at first. I'm going to play the major triad arpeggio. Then the minor triad one. Actually, ideally, you start playing the next one without any uh, stops. So your last note of the previous arpeggio is simultaneously the first note of the next one. So it would be... And then... That was the first inversion of the major chord. And then... the first inversion of the minor chord, and then uh, the second inversion of the major triad, and the second inversion of the minor triad. And then, of course, we start playing a dominant seventh chord. Then a uh, first inversion of it. This one is actually not that comfortable, so when you go back, you see it's a pretty wide distance, so you either over jump it, releasing your thumb slightly before, or you have to rotate your wrist a little bit and you may even try to help yourself with an elbow. The next inversion. the last one and the seventh diminished chord then as soon as you feel uh, fluent with that you might play it with the left hand first And then, of course, with both hands. And so on. And then, when you feel fine with that, when you can play it through without any problems, you can start playing it four octaves long. That is actually a standard for this exercise. So in a standard, this exercise would sound like...
you have noticed, I have played this without pedal at all, because first of all, I have to make sure that I produce a decent level of uh, legato with my fingers. And without pedal, of course, you hear better all uh, problematic switches, all dubious position changes, run notes, whatsoever. So I really recommend you practice that without the pedal first. And then when you are really satisfied with the quality, without the pedal, you can add pedal to even improve your legato playing. And especially uh, you can experiment with the pedal. And the goal is not to play the whole arpeggio on the pedal so it would like sound over uh, flood with pedal. <laughs> This is of course very much flooded with pedal, but what we are trying to do here is to actually improve our legato by applying small drops of pedal. So I'm going to use pedal somewhere uh, in between position changes and I'm going to vibrate with uh, my leg so uh, dampers would move uh, very closely to the strings. So here I would press pedal a little bit and lift it back and then press it again and lift it back press it again and lift it back so I'm trying to cover those parts of my arpeggios when I change positions so just to achieve a smoother uh, effect and because as I told in the previous video it's more efficient often not trying to connect those positions physically, but kind of fly over them. In the faster tempo, you almost don't feel it. But still you can even refine it by using some small drops of pedal. Like. But for this you really have to uh, tremble with your foot uh, very delicately like that and then when you feel comfortable with uh, playing them four octaves long you can even make it more challenging and play not just up and down like you can uh, also play it in a uh, opposite motion so you play two octaves up and then you play them from this point you play them in uh, in the opposite directions so. and then you go up again and then again in, in the opposite directions so at the end it will be like and so on. For me personally, uh, it's always tricky to play the last inversion of the seventh chord, like this one. Because here, you have to kind of spread all the fingers. What helps a lot is really control that you don't have any tension, that you're not really pressing those fingers and that you uh, flatten your fingers a bit and you rotate your wrists a bit like that horizontally around the third finger which is a pivotal point in this case. Also a very good way to learn them is to play them really slowly and control that you transfer the weight of each finger to the next one releasing the previous one that is done. So for example I hit the first finger, then I play the second one, and I just transfer the weight of my hand, like from this finger to this one. And this finger is just released quickly, and then this one, and so on. So. In my school it was required to play this exercise from all white notes fluently because normally if you have an arpeggio starting from the black key you'd probably regroup your hand in order to use your thumb on the white key. The rule is very simple, long key, namely white key, short finger like one or five and opposite short key 
namely black one, long finger, some of those uh, ones. If I would play some arpeggio like G flat, F, A flat, G flat, I obviously would start from the second finger and then use that position. Of course, if you have an arpeggio with all black keys, you don't have a choice. You have to use your thumb on the black key. But it's still wise to experiment uh, with how you actually organize your positions, because in this uh, arpeggio, I still have choice either to start with the thumb, or I can start with the second finger and continue playing with that positions. Or I may even start with uh, to four and play those positions. Uh, I have really to try all those options and to understand what's really comfortable. But actually, I like this exercise so much, uh, so I decided to master it uh, from every key, including the black ones, because black ones obviously also matter. But if you feel like seeking a challenge, you may try it after you master uh, the white notes. The difficult part here is that you really need to find an optimal hand movement between positions. Like, because for example, like uh, playing that from the black key, like from this one. It's pretty much okay till that point, but then... This part. I feel so narrow here, actually, my finger, I have very thin fingers, actually, but still, it, I feel like it's going to stuck there, and especially when I try to turn my hand, so I have to find some, some special movement for that, like, kind of over jumping it. I have to release my finger very quickly in order to regroup my hand for the next one, because if I will have any stress here, this leap would be more challenging. I have explained all these strategies in the previous video about arpeggios, so check it out for more information. That's it for today. Thanks for watching. Please like, subscribe, share this video, and have fun playing piano. <coughs>